uh, Perez Hilton. Perez Hilton. Perez Hilton. We should talk about uh, Perez Hilton. While dysfunctional characters are a dime a dozen on the internet nowadays, in the early days of the World Wide Web, that wasn't necessarily the case. So today we'll be discussing one of the original controversial figures of the online landscape. In the world of celebrity journalism, few figures have generated as much infamy and controversy as Mario Armando Labandera Jr., or as the world knows him, Perez Hilton. Before he took the role of groundbreaking celebrity gossip blogger, Hilton originally charted a different path for himself. After graduating from high school, he attended New York University to pursue his dream of acting, but he did not encounter much luck with the industry after leaving college, aside from a few minor roles in TV and film. For a period, he wrote for the gay magazine The Advocate, a job where he discovered his passion for blogging. Hilton launched his first blog, then called Page666.com, in 2004, and quickly realized what his site's gimmick would be. Humiliating celebrities. Demeaning nicknames, cheap jokes, manufactured rumors, and crude MS Paint doodles of cocaine or bodily fluids on people's pictures. Hilton left no tool unemployed in bullying the stars. Within only six months of his blog being launched, his web column was named by the insider, Hollywood's most hated website, which of course only caused a greater surge for the gossip page that culminated in it crashing temporarily. What Hollywood executives were correctly identifying was that Hilton was utilizing a modern medium to pioneer a new kind of tabloid, one that was free of charge for consumers and was able to achieve ubiquity far quicker than any magazine sitting behind a checkout conveyor belt. The rising personality took advantage of his infamy, proudly wearing the name given to him by the insider on the blog's banner. The website's name was soon changed to PerezHilton.com, based on his nickname that was a play on the then tabloid sensation Paris Hilton. And by 2007, Perez was reaping the rewards of his gossip campaigns, bringing in an impressive $50,000 a week just off early internet advertising. An impressive feat. But as his success grew, so too did his list of controversies and the public's hatred for the gossip peddler. So today, let's unravel the many scandals, confrontations, and drama that have defined Hilton's career. We'll learn more about this after a brief word from our sponsor. Back in the day, subscription boxes used to be pretty terrible, but luckily nowadays, Bespoke Post has solved most of the problems I ever had with them. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome, top-shelf goods from under-the-radar brands. It's free to join and you can skip a month or cancel any time. 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the United States. How it works is every month they introduce their members to cool new products, outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, and clothing based on a preferences quiz they fill out. And each one of these boxes have $70 worth of value in it for a fraction of the price. Every month you'll be assigned a box and you're able to decide if you want to keep it, switch it out, or just skip that month. The two that I really enjoyed recently was the On Tap box, which has an off-road growler and off-road pine cup set. This allows me to bring hot or cold beverages on the road and share them with friends. On top of that, I got the Explore box, which had a Nomad packable backpack M8 water bottle, survival LED headlamp, and toasted coconut plus vanilla bean bar. So to try out Bespoke Post for yourself and get 20% off your first box, click on the link down below and use promo code GFM20 at checkout. Again, use promo code GFM20 at checkout for 20% off your first box. This is a decision you will not regret. In September of 2005, Perez Hilton started posting articles on his blog speculating that former NSYNC member Lance Bass was gay. The first of these came after Bass and his girlfriend, Joanna Garcia, came out as a couple at a Hollywood party. In a post titled, Lance Bass's New B Girlfriend, which included a picture in which Lance was labeled Fabian Bass, Hilton wrote, Don't Lance and Joanna look like the cutest couple? Did anyone else see that episode of Katie Griffin, My Life on the D-List, where Kathy invites her gays and Lance over for game night? Wonder if Joanna will be up for the next one. The next post, which came on December 17th, was written in response to the ex-boy band member making an appearance in the latest issue of the magazine, In Home Weekly. The post was titled, Lance Bass Comes Out of the Closet, and read, Lance must have known this would scream flaming homosexual, otherwise he wouldn't have done it. And if Bass weren't prepared to publicly come out, then he wouldn't have brought his very cute boyfriend with him to the Billboard Music Awards in Vegas last week. We can't wait to see Lance on the cover of The Advocate in early 2006. It's about damn time. 
Three days later, in a post titled A Very Very Merry Christmas, Hilton includes an image in which he labels Bass a homophobic slur. On January 25th, after Bass responded to Hilton's attack via MySpace, another article was posted titled Homo Unleashes His Claws, in which the gossip blogger called him a fuming f Things continued like this for months as Hilton continued writing about the NSYNC performer. March 6th, in a post titled Dear Lance, Can't we kiss and make up and kiss some more? The former and sinker, a picture with Jamie Lynn Sigler and the fat one on Sunday, gave Perez the evil eye all night long at the US Weekly party. Sheesh, wonder why. Wink, wink. P.S. Lance showed up without any male or female date. A month later, after discovering from inside sources that Lance had started seeing another man, Perez decided to get far more personal with his harassment of the singer. In a post titled, Introducing Lance's New Boyfriend, he wrote, Some of you may know this Ricky Martin lookalike. His name is Ryshin, and his initial claim to fame was being one of the first two openly gay men to win CBS's reality show, The Amazing Race. In a turn of events, after Bass finally came out of the closet in July of 2006, Hilton received criticism from many in the LGBT community for his culpability in forcing him to reveal his sexuality. Still, Perez remained unyielding in defense of his actions. In an interview with Access Hollywood, he spoke of the outrage, saying, If you know something to be a fact, why not report it? Why is that still taboo? He went on to declare, The only way we're gonna have change is with visibility, and if I have to drag some people screaming out of the closet, then I will. Even after Bass came out to the world, Hilton refused to ease up with his targeted jabs, bestowing upon the ex-heartthrob the new moniker of Princess Frosty Locks in his scathing write-ups. The two seemingly buried the hatchet for a moment when Bass's boyfriend invited Hilton to a book release party, taking a photo together on the red carpet. But almost a decade later, Lance Bass came clean in an interview View about how he had felt at the time, calling Hilton's campaign against him malicious. In August of 2007, in a post titled, An Official Announcement is Coming, Hilton gave the world the ultimate inside scoop on Fidel Castro, the president of Cuba. Sources reveal exclusively to PerezHilton.com that US officials will be holding a press conference shortly to announce the death of Cuban dictator Fidel Castro. PerezHilton.com was the first media outlet in the world to break the news of Castro's death. We posted this item on it last week. A Cuban broke the story of the oppressive ogre's passing. We are so proud and happy. We're so sad we can't be in Miami this weekend. This revelation blazed through the internet like wildfire and left many intently waiting for Castro's death to be formally announced. But hours passed and no statement came from US officials, and no major media outlets verified Hilton's claims. And before long, it was quite clear that the provocateur's insider information was not a reflection of reality. It would later be determined by the Associated Press that the rumors Perez had heard were sparked by a meeting of Miami officials, organized to discuss the city's contingency protocol for when the Cuban leader would die. The entire ordeal diminished any veneer of credibility that Hilton's blog had as a source for exclusive information, with other publications lambasting him for false prophesying. Two years later, on September 9th, 2009, Perez appeared on the Tyra Banks show and was asked if he had any regrets from his long career of tormenting people and stirring up drama. In response, Hilton said that his misreporting of Castro's death was the one and only thing he wished he could take back. Ironically, that very year, he ran into another scandal by asserting incorrect information in the opposite direction. On June 25th, it was reported that Michael Jackson had been rushed to the hospital after suffering cardiac arrest. Quickly, in an effort to put his own spin on the news, Hilton posted to his blog arguing that the King of Pop was merely faking his emergency to get out of his tour commitments. Perez's original post with a picture of Michael Jackson and the text overlay, heart attack or cold feet, reads as follows. Supposedly, the singer went into cardiac arrest and the paramedics had to administer CPR. We are dubious. Jax pulled a similar stunt when he was getting ready for his big HBO special in the 95 rehearsal. Either he's lying or making himself sick, but we're curious to see if he's gonna be able to go on. Get your money back, ticket holders. After Jackson's death was confirmed, Hilton made an about turn in attitude, pulling down the post and replacing it with one that read, such a sad loss, especially for his three young children. This half-hearted apology did nothing to quell the wrath of the internet, which came down on the gossip maven in the following days, to the point that hashtag unfollowperez became trending on Twitter. Some celebrities called him out personally. You can't make your life tearing someone apart who is a human being and then flip on a dime and say respect and mourn him. 
Eventually, the public outrage dissipated, but the new low Hilton sank to was not forgotten by anyone. In 2009, Hilton found himself in the center of a hot political story when he served as a judge for that year's Miss USA pageant. During the final round of the competition, Hilton asked contestant Carrie Prejean what her views were on same-sex marriage. Carrie's response, in which she expressed her opposition to the concept, led to a public feud between the gossip blogger and the beauty pageant competitor. You know what? In my country and in, in, in my family, I think that I believe that a marriage should be between a man and a woman. No offense to anybody out there, but that's how I was raised and that's how I think that it should be between a man and a woman. Thank you. Following the show, an infuriated Perez stormed to his hotel room and recorded his response to Carrie's answer. She lost not because she doesn't believe in gay marriage. Miss California lost because she's a dumb bitch, okay? After publishing the video, Hilton went on to directly tell ABC News that Prejean lost the competition because of her statement. Soon, whether it was true or not, the top story in America became, Miss USA contestant loses a crown by coming out in favor of opposite marriage, as she put it. Carrie herself promoted the idea, stating that she was asked by pageant officials to retract her remarks. She said that she was told, You need to apologize to the gay community. You need to not talk about your faith. This has everything to do with you representing California and saving the brand. This became a hot political topic at the time that placed the debates around same-sex marriage at the center of the country's focus, with a variety of politicians, commentators, and organizations stepping in to condemn one side or another. Kerry became a symbol of conservative values. Conversely, Perez faced backlash for his vitriolic language towards the contestant from people on both sides of the issue. In the end, the needle of public opinion was not moved in any direction due to this circus, but Hilton's tantrum allowed him more coveted time in the limelight. One of the most widely publicized incidents involving Perez Hilton was his spat with the Black Eyed Peas. The date was June 21st, 2009. The event was a Much Music Video Awards after party in Toronto, and many of the music industry's hottest stars were in attendance, including Will I Am, who was DJing. At this party, there was a physical altercation outside the nightclub that ended with Hilton tweeting at 2.34 a.m., I'm in shock. I need the police ASAP. Please come to the Soho Metropolitan Hotel now. I was assaulted by Will I Am of the Black Eyed Peas and his security guards. I am bleeding. Please, I need to file a police report. No joke. An hour later, Will I Am created a Twitter account to respond to Hilton's allegations. He tweeted at 3.47 a.m., It isn't cool for someone to blame you and blast you with lies. Perez Hilton is a liar. At 5.10, Will posted a video on his website denying that he hit Hilton and recalling his version of events. And he said, um, I don't respect you. I was like, what? Okay, well, if you don't respect me, that's, that's cool. I'm not, you don't have to respect me, but I respect you. And then he says, you know, that was very fag of you for coming at me like that. So I was like, yo, dude, I was just saying, keep our name out of your mouth if you're going to be disrespectful in front of a whole bunch of people outside, bunch of fans outside of Canada and says, you're a f Will I am, <laughs> right? So I'm like, wow, dude, right? So he walks away and, it, and then one of the fans get all like crazy and they like start some stuff with Perez Hilton. And I'm sitting there just minding my own business waiting for a car and whatnot, but it just goes to show you how crazy things could get. The next morning, Hilton fired back at Will I Am with a 12-minute rant in which he provided his side of the story and claimed that the Black Eyed Peas manager, Laborio Molina, known as Polo to the band, was his attacker. What happened to me in Toronto happened to me as a human being and it should not happen to anyone. Violence is never the answer. Ever. No matter what anyone says. Blood should never be drawn. Another person should never be hit. In response, Will I Am created a second video, once again denying Perez's claims and accusing him of craving attention over his own well being. Shortly after Will I Am's second response at the web, TMZ released footage of part of the altercation. In the recording, Hilton can clearly be heard calling Will I Am a homophobic slur at which point someone clubs him in the face, although it's not clear in the footage who the person is. Hours after this video was released, Black Eyed Peas manager Polo turned himself into the Toronto 
Toronto Police in connection with the alleged assault. That evening, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, or GLAD for short, issued a statement to TMZ condemning Hilton for his slur usage and demanding he apologize. The next morning, Hilton issued his response to TMZ. I am saddened GLAD chose to victimize me further by criticizing me for how I non-violently dealt with a very scary situation that unfortunately turned violent. While I doubt I will get an apology from GLAD, nor do I expect one, I would just hope people know how difficult it is to intellectualize a situation and think rationally when a thug disguised as a musician is screaming at your face and intimidating you. While that was going on, Toronto police formally charged Polo with assault, a charge that posed years in jail for the band manager. On June 25, 2009, Hilton did finally apologize for his choice of words, saying on a blog post titled, I'm sorry. I am speaking out because I realize that the last few days have been more hurtful to me and many others than the repeated blows I suffered to my head in Toronto this past weekend. I am not apologizing to GLAD. I could care less about them, my former employers. I am apologizing to the gay community, to anyone who was hurt by my choice of words, and to all the people who have emailed me to thank me for all I have done to fight for gay rights over the last few years. He ended the apology letter by declaring that he would donate all the money from his lawsuit against his attacker to the Matthew Shepard Foundation although they quickly rejected this offer. In the end, Polo apologized to Perez as part of an agreement to drop the assault charges. Hilton stated to the press that he was happy to see the man take responsibility. Polo also had to donate 500 Canadian dollars to charity. Usually, Hilton's controversies involve a breach of good taste, but this next skirmish was a case where he may have taken a step too far and breached federal law. On June 14th, 2010, he tweeted to his 2 million followers a link to an upskirt photo of an underage Miley Cyrus with the caption, If you were easily offended, do not click here. Oh, Miley. Warning, truly not for the easily offended. The internet responded in a quick uproar, admonishing Perez for posting a revealing photo of a starlet who was only 17 years old at the time, with many declaring that the blogger had disseminated illegal imagery. Some media outlets consulted legal experts, all of whom agreed that Miley had a case if she wanted to take the blogger to court. One described Hilton's actions as suicidal. The photo was taken down upon the thunderous backlash, but Perez wasted no time in broadcasting his defense, responding in a video on his blog. Do you think Miley is that stupid to be out in public without panties? In a fortunate development for Hilton, Entertainment Online reported three days later that Miley would not press charges, with a source close to her saying, she just wants to move on. She thinks it's the work of an idiot and wants to move forward. Undeterred by the outrage, Hilton doubled down on his behavior, tweeting another revealing picture of the 17-year-old a week after with the caption, Oh, hashtag Miley. Warning, if you're easily offended, do not click here. Miley would get her revenge in the spring of next year when the two ran into each other at the Arclight Theater. According to Hilton's book, she loudly confronted him. What the F were you thinking, she shouted, making everyone turn and stare. She continued telling him exactly what she thought of his website, which was not positive by all accounts. With all the drama Perez found himself in to achieve infamy, it should be no surprise that he would get into legal hot water along the way. So I think now would be a good time for a compilation of the most publicized of these cases. His legal troubles would start all the way back in January of 2006, when he was named as a defendant in a lawsuit by Colin Farrell after he posted a link to the Irish actor's sex tape. Hilton referenced the lawsuit many times in his writings, starting the very same day he was named in the suit. With three consecutive posts titled respectively, Colin Farrell is suing Perez Hilton, Colin Farrell picked the wrong f to sue, and an open letter to Colin Farrell. All these posts contain the same message. Colin, please don't sue Perez. Two days later, Hilton published a post titled Perez Hilton and Crazy Baby Present, Colin vs. Perez, which read, We still can't believe he's suing us. The last time the lawsuit was referenced on his blog was on March 13th, when Perez wrote an article titled We're Still Being Sued, in which he broke down the details of the case. Farrell settled the following month on April 19th. On November 30th that same year, photo agency 
Galaxy X17 Online filed an action against Hilton in federal court, seeking over $7.5 million in damages for copyright infringement. The suit charged that Hilton used 51 of their photos without consent, credit, or compensation, including images of a pregnant Katie Holmes and Britney Spears. The co-owner of the agency, Brandy Navarre, later said when speaking to the media, We've had trouble with a lot of bloggers, but he's the biggest, and the most arrogant and pig-headed. According to Hilton, there was a personal aspect to this conflict. The two parties used to be collaborators and regularly linked to each other's sites. But after Perez became fed up with continuously getting scolded for not crediting them well enough, he removed the link to her page. And with that, they became a fast enemies. But this spat would quickly escalate when, on April 26, 2007, a group of five notoriously competitive paparazzo agencies set aside their differences and filed a joint lawsuit levying similar complaints against Hilton, claiming in total more than $7 million in damages from 25 instances of alleged copyright infringement. And if things weren't overwhelming enough already, just three days later, upon arriving in Sydney to attend the MTV Australia Video Music Awards, Hilton was served with a lawsuit by Jamie Fawcett of Photo News for his unauthorized use of a single copyrighted photograph of John Mayer and Jessica Simpson. Under the crushing weight and scope of the incoming litigation, his web hosting service dropped his site out of fear of liability in all the cases he was facing. PerezHilton.com went dark for hours before it returned online with a different host. On June 17, 2007, Hilton retaliated by filing an unfair business practices suit against X17, alleging it broke wage and labor laws by making its photographers work long hours with low pay. A judge tossed a suit, arguing Perez had no standing to bring a case on behalf of another company's employees. Eventually, all the suits ended in settlements, and although their terms and payments were undisclosed, there is no doubt Hilton took a significant financial loss from all of the legal fees. On February 20th, 2007, Hilton ventured into the new exciting territory of being taken to court by a company other than a paparazzi agency when he was sued by Universal City Studios Productions LLP after posting a topless picture of Jennifer Aniston on his blog. The photo at issue was a shot from the comedy film The Breakup, which featured Aniston's unconcealed breasts. The lawsuit alleged that the photograph was misappropriated and illegally copied by Perez. The outcome of this case is currently unknown, although it can be assumed that it ended in a settlement of some kind. Years later, during an appearance on The Ellen Show, Aniston revealed that she confronted Hilton over this matter. And I say, who is that? She goes, I think that's Perez Hilton. And I said, no. I have to say something to him. Like, I have to. On July 17, 2007, DJ Samantha Ronson, a Hollywood disc jockey who was close friends with Lindsay Lohan, filed a $20 million libel suit against Perez for a piece he had written about her. The post in question accused Ronson of planting the cocaine in Lohan's car, which had been discovered by the police, as well as profiting off alerting paparazzi to the troubled starlet's locations whenever she was intoxicated. Three months later, the judge cleared the way for Hilton's deposition, but was soon informed that the blogger's attorney had settled with Ronson. It was dismissed soon after, and the celeb DJ had to pay nearly $87,000 to cover Perez's legal fees. On October 11, 2007, Zamba label group filed a suit against Hilton for copyright infringement for illegally posting at least 10 leaked Britney Spears songs, asking for real and punitive damages in an unspecified amount. In response, Hilton announced on his blog in March the next year that he would no longer reference any artist signed to Sony BMG, in retaliation for them owning the record label group that was suing him. Once the lawsuit was settled, Hilton announced in a post on November 17th that the website's boycott was over. In 2008, Hilton was sued for $25 million by an Ohio woman named Diane Wargo. What possible beef could she have had with the infamous blogger? Well, it started the previous year when Diane, who worked as a nurse in a senior living center in Cleveland, sent Hilton an email that read, Perez, you are a fat gay pig. Angelina is a ugly whore. You love her because she is a f 
Glover. Her brother is a gay little jerk, just like your fat ugly ass. Mangelina is a disgusting, gross skank. Upon reading the obscene message, Hilton elected to post it on his blog, as well as Diane's full name and email address. Unfortunately for Diane, the email she used was her works, and it did not take long for the blog's fans to find her employer and inform them of her actions. She was fired the very same day. Months later, he brought her lawsuit against Perez to court, contending that he violated the conditions of use disclaimer on his website, that stated the privacy of visitors would be protected and that personal information would be disclosed only by obtaining permission. Perez's lawyer argued that this disclaimer applied to the comments within the website, not direct emails. After a long five-year legal battle, Hilton was able to claim victory once the lawsuit concluded in arbitration. On May 2nd, 2012, Robert Prokop who designed Brad Pitt's $500,000 engagement ring for Angelina Jolie, sued Hilton for libel, after he alleged on his blog that the New York jeweler had committed fraud in the past. In the post at the center of this case, the gossip monger had reported on an incident in which Prokop had been sued over a 1985 diamond necklace transaction in which the buyer was allegedly misinformed about the quantity of carrots involved. While the text of the post got nothing factually wrong, the title certainly did, as Prokop had not actually been found guilty of fraud. According to the lawsuit which sought damages of $500,000, the statements that plaintiff was guilty of fraud in connection with his jewelry business and that a court had awarded a judgment against him for that fraud is libelous on its face. The outcome of this lawsuit is currently unknown to the public. Finally, on June 26, 2013, Hilton was sued by New York Times photographer Robert Kaplan for $2 million after he posted 14 copyrighted photos on his blog without permission and with his own watermark. According to Kaplan's suit, even though his website contained preventative measures to block photo theft, Hilton circumvented these by simply taking screenshots of his work. The complaint goes on to describe how, after he had reached out to Perez to remove the photos, he was met with an apology and a promise to take down the images. This promise was never followed through on. Once the lawsuit was served, the offending pictures quickly disappeared from the blog. The case against Hilton, like many before it, was settled out of court. In 2010, a tragic series of events occurred in which several gay teenagers opted to take their own lives due to being bullied for their sexuality. This led to the online campaign, It Gets Better where influencers from across industries posted videos talking to LGBT youth, and this included Perez Hilton. And this video is directed and made with love for those of you who are gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and having a difficult time being whom we were born. After this statement was published, many pounced on the blogger for his own role in bullying gay celebrities in the past. According to Hilton's book, the adverse reaction to his video prompted a moment of realization. People wrote such hateful comments that I couldn't bring myself to read even half of them. The strength of the hate storm really shook me and popped the bubble I'd been living in. I realized for the first time that it wasn't just a handful of people who disliked what I did, it was the overwhelming majority. I finally understood that the things I wrote genuinely hurt people and deeply. The next day, Hilton posted another video, this one titled, I'm going to be doing things differently. In the upload, he expressed regret over his past decisions and made the guarantee that going forward, he would not use homophobic nicknames or partake in the relentless bullying he had done so far in his career. He expressed a desire to become a more positive blogger, distancing himself from some of his earlier controversies. While many took this with a grain of salt, it marked a significant shift in his public image and approach to celebrity gossip. On October 6, 2015, Perez posted a photo of himself in a shower with his two-year-old son. The caption read, Our family motto is hashtag fun. We try and incorporate fun into as much of the everyday things we do. Hashtag bath time. The photo stirred up drama, with many arguing that posting the photo was inappropriate, others arguing that the act of showering with one's son was weird, and some even going so far as to accuse Hilton of abuse. Others defended him, claiming that there was nothing wrong with what was in the picture. As one Instagram comment wrote, It's called normal parenting. Jeez, some people need to get a life. Kiddo appears to be having fun, looks exceptionally healthy and happy. I'm not even a PH fan, but feel the need to support him on this. 
Perez defended himself against the backlash, telling the Daily Mail, Everyone does what they see fit as a parent. Personally, I enjoy putting on my swim trunks and taking a shower with my son as often as possible. In 2019, Hilton joined TikTok and quickly grew an audience, garnering an average of 10 million views per week from his tea-spilling uploads. This was big considering he had fallen off popularity-wise since his heyday a decade prior. It appeared that the industry of online gossip he pioneered had grown into a massive business, with him trying to get a bit of a career second wind through being a veteran of the trade. Unfortunately, on December 14th, 2020, his account was suddenly banned from the Chinese social media platform, after getting mass-reported by Charlie D'Amelio fans for commenting negatively on one of her dance videos. In response, Perez posted to his YouTube channel, tearfully begging Charlie to do something to get his account reinstated. I have reached out to Charlie D'Amelio and her family. I messaged them on Instagram, begging them for help. This video only caused the aging gossip monger to be further ridiculed by his detractors, with feedback like, someone who outed celebrities for years on their platform and doesn't deserve any kind of platform. And, just found this and thank you so much. I've had a horrible day, but watching a fully grown man cry over a social media account is awesome. You have spent your whole career going after and being horrible to others. We enjoy your pain. Eventually, he was able to return to TikTok in July of 2022, but only months later, he would once again be banned, this time for spreading unverified conspiracy theories about Britney Spears' whereabouts. He currently has no account on the platform, and this has been, to date, the last major controversy of his career. From harassing minors to leaking nude photos to outing closeted celebrities to exploiting the mentally ill, Perez maintained a thoroughly varied career until his medium of attention-getting blogs was antiquated by newer, more stimulating social media algorithms and influencers. While he was once on the top of Hollywood, being named the number one web celeb by Forbes magazine three years in a row, getting invited to prestigious parties, and rubbing elbows with the hottest celebrities, he now has been relegated to posting content content on his two small YouTube channels. In one of the podcasts he's appeared in over the past few years, Hilton uncharacteristically said something rather interesting. Like you, like you think you're past the point of redemption with a certain yes. group of people. And, and I don't need to be redeemed. Is it true? Can there be redemption for Perez? Can he ever win back the hearts and minds of the public? Only time will tell. It's crazy to think that 20 years ago, Perez Hilton essentially invented the tea-spilling community on the internet, with it still expanding to this very day on YouTube and TikTok. And with that thought, I think I'll end the video here. So until next time, thanks for watching.